Hello, I'm William and I'm from Bit77.com, also the creator of Vuzik.com and I want to talk about the Bit77 Micro. This is the original PCB I was working for the Bit77 2.0 but uh, instead I'm doing something a bit different. I'm using this bar to create a very small sequencer but with a lot of features that I want to talk about. So let me show you the board. This board already showed some pictures before. It uses 280 Mega 328 Arduino compatible chip. It has MIDI input output, the USB is for power and uh, daisy chaining more device in the future. And I have the SD card and the two processors are working in parallel. So one is for sequencing and the other for the SD card interface and the LCD interface and buttons and everything else. Uh, this is a one, one sign uh, custom made PCB and I just use the SD card adapter I bought on eBay. And I'm using the regular um, SD library, so you can use any, any kind of SD card, almost any kind. Here I'm using, um, let me see, this is a 2 gigabyte or 4 gigabyte, I don't remember the one, this is an 8 gigabyte card. And it works pretty well with FAT32. So let me plug this in here. My hand is a bit hard. But I can do it. Let me plug the SD card. So the small board uses the two wire interface for the LCD. Let me connect to the LCD. This is just regular two wire LCD you can get on eBay. And then you have the headers for the buttons for the interface. I'm just reusing one of my previous made board that has the LEDs, but in this case I'm just using the buttons. So I'm going to connect the board here. But you don't need to create a board, you can just use any kind of, of buttons you want and connect directly to the board. And I'm going to connect to my computer. So I have two interfaces here. One for the main area, main interface, and other for the sequencer. So I'm going to just power everything and connect from the sequencer so I can see on my computer. Things should be working now. Yes, yeah, it's working. And I'm going to talk about the features of the Bit77 Micro, or Micro, if you want to call it that way. We have 14 drum, drum tracks with labels, two accent tracks, and nine note tracks. The note tracks, you can have a velocity and key for each step, while the drum steps just on and off for each step. And we also have some pretty neat options. Let me show you the MIDI processor. For each track, you have a MIDI processor, so you can use fade in velocity, fade out, fade in and out, fade out and in, fade in on the last variation of the pattern, I will talk about that in a minute. Run velocity, you also have charts for the note tracks, the nine note tracks, major, five and seven, octave one, octave one and two, and custom charts. Custom charts is very neat. You can have two, 12 different custom charts and uh, they don't track the notes where you are playing but they track the octave you're playing. I'm going to talk that also in a minute. And you can also label the pattern. You have um, the SD card. Everything is on text files on the SD card. So you can create your own names for the patterns and select here the, those names. You can have two, 250, 55 if I recall names for, for the patterns. And the same thing for the tracks. Each track you can label in using those names you put on the SD card and everything is recorded on the SD card too. And uh, let me 
talk a bit more about features here. You have four variations, A, B, C, and D for each pattern. So you have the 16 steps here for each variation and they play one after the other, but you can select if you want to use less variations. You just select in here, less variations. I just want a regular 16 step sequence. I just use the variation A. Why four variations? Oh, I'm going to show it in just a minute. Just hang on. Okay, you have the four variations. So you have 16 steps times four. And for each step, you have regular step and double step, or just the, actually is a regular step, a regular and double step, or just the double step. Because between each step, you have another step. So you actually have 32 steps. But this way you can edit much more quickly. And uh, that's why variation is very important. And you're going to see when I talk about the mirror mode. And these double steps also works on the note tracks. Um, let me see. Let me play something here. Let me turn mirroring. When I select mirroring, you can see that it's a little cursor change in there. It's going to edit all the vari variations at the same time. So if I put like this here. And I change variations above you will see that all variations have the same editions. Then I can turn off and just on the last variation, I can just go and add something different. Okay, now when I hit play, the interface is going to write the pattern to the SD card because something was changed, or if I hit stop, it's going to do the same thing. And the sequence is going to, to run in parallel so you can see on my interface here and on my computer is going to play too okay let me go to the next snare I'm going to add Select mirroring again. I'm going to disable mirroring and going to the other variation I have a shortcut here I can use to go directly and I'm going to go now to the hi-hats also select mirroring and just add the hi-hats And of course I have the menu option where I can copy, paste clear patterns, can I add a new pattern, go to song mode, and also create my custom charts here. The custom charts is a very neat option. And let me go to the notes track show a bit how the nose tracks works oh i forgot forgot the xa tracks let me then the sound's going to be a bit louder 
That's why it's so. Oh yeah, now it's going to play much better. You can You can hear the double notes I added on the hi-hat. Okay, let me... S I don't have any sound here, I just use the, the computer sound. I was a bit lazy of doing something different here. But just to have an idea. So, let's say, on the note track I add a step here. I'm just using the piano sound. Yeah, I know. But I have... Let me put stop. It's going to save as I hit stop. Okay, I have the velocity and the note, but I also have the option for the double note. The both actually both regular and a double and just a double. And I also ha have the option of slide because this is a monophonic track. If you uh, use an instrument like um, a bass line that has this slide option when two keys are pressed together and uh, the last one's released after the first one uh, the second one actually is going to do a slide sound so this is the this option does that this is the slide option or just the note off so let me do a regular note and just a note off just after that so you can understand what I'm talking about And you can see on the step edge over here. And you can also replay the last note. So it's very easy to edit with just these these buttons. I forgot to talk about the buttons. So just a quick overview of, of nav navigation. The record option I'm not using here yet the menu which opens in the menu and it closes the shift which has some short keys for selecting the track directly and the variations directly the up down left and right interface the plus and minus for the values and the play and stop the shift is also okay on the menu so when I select the menu and select something like copy and select shift is going to copy to the SD card the current pattern or track if you select track and uh, let me think what else I can talk about here I also have another option for the note tracks the note track can be notes or MIDI controllers so here I have notes or I can select MIDI controller. Then for each step I can select which controller and which value for that controller. So it's very handy and it's very useful for this kind of, of thing we're doing here. Um, what else can I talk about? Well, we have up to 99 songs on the SD card. Each song has can have a name, up to 99 patterns. And um, that's pretty much it. I don't I only have two patterns here, this one and an empty one. So I selected the other one, which is it's just an empty. But I think for this video, this shows pretty much what this interface does. Let me show the card a bit more. This is the card I have created. I could have done a smaller card, but that would require a two-sided board with some SMD um, chips. <laughs> and I was thinking on making, maybe getting, instead of the MIDI sockets, using some other kind of socket in a 
carded uh, cable adapter because those are very large so I'm just going to see what people think about the project so far before I can invest more time and money on this project because it's turning to be very great I just hope you guys like it too so check the the video description to see how you can help this project become a reality and what the next step will be and so on thanks for watching